All right, so we want to learn a little bit about trig integrals. Um, so integrals of the form sine raised to some power times cosine raised to some power. So let's say sine to the m of x times cosine to the n of x. So um, we're going to do some like simple examples first, and then work our way up to some sort of general approach that we think will work. So of course, you know, the integral of sine is going to be minus cosine, because the derivative of cosine is minus sine. And the integral of cosine is sine. And then when you start mixing and matching, things get a little bit more interesting. Um, if you have sine raised to some power m times cosine, you can do this by substitution. So you could let u be sine, because you have that raised to the mth power. And then du is going to be cosine. So this is the integral of u to the m du. So it's going to be u to the m plus 1 divided by m plus 1. Or 1 over m plus 1 sine to the m plus 1 of x plus a constant of integration. And similarly, If I integrated a power of cosine times sine, you could say let w be cosine, the function you have raised to the mth power, and then you have minus dw here, because dw will be minus sine of x dx. So you do this. But you can do a similar idea. And a sort of early example where you have some choices is just what if you have sine x times cosine x? Well, you could do it by letting u be sine x and du be cosine x. Or you could let w be cosine x and then you have a minus dw here. So you have choices here. One way. Let u be sine x. u be cosine x. Another way. Uh, let w be cosine x. dw be minus sine x. And then you could also use the fact that um, we know the sum formula for sine, that, or the double angle for sine, that sine of 2x is sine of x times cosine x plus cosine x sine x. So that's twice sine x cosine x. So if I divide both sides here by 2, I get that sine x cosine x is one half sine two x. So the third way tells us that the integral of sine x cosine x is the same as one half the integral of sine two x, which you can also do by substitution. So try these three methods and look at the answers you get, and then try to figure out why they all look so different. Um, so each of these methods work, but they give you answers that look different. So you should explain why. But it gives you some idea of 
why you need to be careful when you're doing these types of problems. That someone else might integrate in a slightly different way and get an answer that looks quite different, even though they're actually the same. So give this a try and explain your answers. All right, so we can integrate sine and cosine. We can integrate it when um, we have just one cosine or just one sine mixed with some other ones. We should also be able to integrate like powers of cosine and sine. So what about like the integral of cosine squared of x. And the problem we have here is that um, we'd like to use sub for cosine, but we don't have a, a du. There's no sine in sight. We don't have a derivative of this function on the inside. So what we do instead is we use the half angle formula. For cosine, which is that cosine squared x is 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. So this is the integral of 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. And what this does is it allows us to replace this power of cosine, you know, a square of cosine with just a cosine basically. So this is much easier. So this is the integral of one half with respect to x, that's one half x, plus the integral of cosine two x, you know, over two. And you can do this by substitution. That if you let u be two x, then du is twice dx. So this ends up being one half x plus uh, antiderivative of cosine is sine 2x over 4. So this is how you integrate cosine squared. And cosine, or uh, sine squared is similar, right? So the integral of sine squared x dx is similar, and you should do it. And you're just going to use the fact you can use the half angle formula for cosine. That sine squared of x is um, 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. Sorry, use the half angle formula for sine. So give that a shot. So we've learned how to integrate cosine, we've learned how to integrate sine, we know how to integrate cosine times sine, we know how to integrate the squares. So next let's do, you know, cubes. Like what's the integral of cosine cubed x? And the trick for all of these is basically to try to figure out a way to rewrite your higher power in terms of lower powers. And one way that we can do that here is we can use the Pythagorean identity. That we know that cosine squared x plus sine squared x is 1. And what I have here is cosine cubed, which is cosine x times cosine squared x. And if I replace cosine squared x with 1 minus sine squared x, I get an integral that I know how to do. Or rather, I get two integrals that I can do. I get the integral of cosine of x, which is easy. 
minus the integral of cosine x sine squared x. And these are integrals that we did before, right? This is one where you, you know, let u be sine x, and then we have a du, and the integral of cosine is sine, so this is sine x minus uh, one third sine cubed x when you write it out. So uh, the integral of sine cubed is going to be similar. You do it. But basically, um, the sort of general approach to attacking these, these trig integrals is to use these two methods. Use the half angle formulas and use the Pythagorean identity um, to attack harder problems. So let's do sort of one last interesting case. So we've done sort of all the third power ones. Um, and so the next thing that seems sort of hard would be something like cosine squared x times sine squared x. So I'm going to show you two ways to do this, and you, know, you get to pick which one you prefer. So first way is to use the, the double angle formula for sine again. So remember that we said that sine of 2x is twice sine x cosine x. So this here, cosine x times sine x quantity squared, um, we can rewrite this way. So we get that cosine x times sine x is sine 2x over 2. And so this integrand is the square of this. It's cosine x squared times sine x squared. So that's going to be sine squared 2x over 2 squared, or 4. So using the double angle formula for sine, we get that this is the integral of sine squared 2x over 4. And this is very closely related to an integral that we already did, right? This is basically an integral of sine squared just with some extra constants floating around. Right, so this is one fourth the integral of sine squared 2x. Use the half angle formula for sine. Right, so we know that sine squared of a number is one minus uh, cosine of twice that number over two. And here we want t to be 2x. So I get that sine squared of 2x is going to be 1 minus cosine of twice twice x. So that'll be 4x over 2. So this is the, the half angle formula again. So I get the integral of cosine squared x times sine squared x dx is one fourth the integral of sine squared 2x, which we just said is one minus cosine four x over two. So this is one fourth times so the integral of one half dx is going to be one half x, and the integral of minus cosine 4x over 2 will be minus sine 4x over 8. So you're going to substitute for 4x here, and then to get the constants to work out, this will have to do, plus a constant. So this is 1 8 x minus sine 4x over 32 plus c. So check this. Yeah, 
I believe that that is correct. But you should always double check your work, because especially since we've used sort of two different identities, it's, it's pretty easy to make a mistake somewhere trying to multiply all this stuff out correctly. So what's a, a second way? Another way is I can use the half angle formulas uh, directly. So I'm going to use the fact that cosine of 2x is 1 plus cosine 2x over 2, and sine squared x is 1 plus or 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. So my original integral, cosine squared x, sine squared x, is the integral of 1 plus cosine 2x over 2 times 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. And this works out quite nicely. When you multiply this out, you get a nice difference of squares up top. You get 1 minus cosine squared 2x over 4. And you have sort of like a, a choice of how you want to deal with this now. Um, one way is I could replace 1 minus cosine squared with sine squared. Um, another way is I could just break this up as the fraction 1 fourth and then minus cosine squared 2x and then use the half angle formula again. Um, so there's more than one way to uh, scramble this egg if you feel that way. So let's go ahead and say that this is the integral of sine squared 2x over 4. And then let's use this half angle formula for sine again. That if I rewrite the half angle formula for sine, replacing you know, this number with twice x, then sine squared of 2x is going to be 1 minus cosine 4x over So here, this is the integral of 1 fourth times sine squared of 2x, which we said is 1 minus cosine 4x over 2. So I can you know, factor out an eighth if I want. And then I get the integral of 1 minus cosine of 4x. Antiderivative of 1 is x antiderivative of cosine 4x, or negative cosine 4x, is going to be minus sine 4x over 4 when you do the substitution. And this way we also get x over 8 minus sine 4x over 32. Uh, and fortunately we got the same answer, so we probably did this right. So next time we're going to try to figure out, you know, what's the general method for dealing with problems like this?